here from Bishopney Primary School and we're here today at Fintown Pottery with Belia. What did you do before you came to Fintown Pottery? I used to be a professional opera singer before I came to the pottery. Why do you like pottery so much? Uh, that's very difficult because it's so personal. But when I first came into the pottery here and I saw all the beautiful colours of the pots, I just thought, wow, I really want to do this. What is your favourite part of the day? My favourite part of the day is the morning. When I first walk in and I make my cup of tea and I just see all the pots and think about all the things that I'm going to do during the day. Okay, that's my favourite part. What items do you make at the pottery? Well, we make all sorts of items. We make practical things such as cups and mugs and plates and bowls. But we also make what's called decorative things. So we have our sculptures and we make the leaves and other and mushrooms you will also see as you look around. So we make very many different things. Who buys your pottery? Uh, the people who buy our pottery are uh, people who come to visit the foundation, mm -hmm. tourists people come, then we also have local people who come and buy our pottery and people what we call collectors. So once they've bought, for example, a mug and a bowl, then they will come back a few months later and buy the plate and other things to go with it. Mm -hmm. So it's a very diverse cross-section of people who come here and buy our pottery. <laughs> Where do you get your clay from? We get our clay from Stoke-on-Trent in Middle England and Stoke-on-Trent is a very famous ceramic area. It is where the ceramics and the potteries started in the UK. But we also go to the Finthorn Bay sometimes because there is some clay in the Finthorn Bay and we dig it out of the Finthorn Bay and bring it back but it fires at too low a temperature so we can't actually make a pot from it but what we do do is we add a lot of water to it and then we paint it on the pot and it makes its own glaze. How much clay do you use each year? It's about one and a half tons of clay. Tons, yes. So it's a lot of clay. <laughs> Where does this spare clay go? The spare clay we put into buckets and we add water to it and we then uh, go through a process of recycling it. Uh, we have some people who come and volunteer here and they help us to recycle the clay and then we reuse it. Why is the first firing called the biscuit? Yes, it's called a biscuit firing because it comes from the French word bisque which means to twice fire. And so the bisque is the first part of that twice firing cycle, but it's also because when it comes out after the first firing, it looks like a biscuit. <laughs> it's a bit soft, it's a bit crumbly, it's a bit uh, pinkish in colour, so it looks like a biscuit. What is reduction firing? Reduction firing is when in the second firing uh, we fire to 1300 degrees centigrade, and we have to use solid fuel, that is either gas or wood or oil, and we use gas, and that at a certain stage in the firing, at about 900 degrees centigrade, we block off the chimney, so that the fire then has difficulty in burning, and it's looking for oxygen, and it takes the oxygen out of the oxides, which are the colouring agents in the glazes, so that it turns these oxides back to base metal colour. So for example, copper is normally a green colour, but when the oxygen is taken out of it, it becomes a red colour. So if you don't use reduction firing, then the copper will remain green. And our copper turns red. Okay. What is a glaze? A glaze is a lot of different uh, minerals and, as I said, the oxides mixed together to specific recipes and then suspended in water. And then when we dip the pot in, after it's been biscuit fired, it sticks to the pot and it fires at these very high temperatures and it turns to glass. Right? And it melts like glass onto the pot and when 
uh, the firing is cool again and we unpack it. It's become hard like glass, so it's a glass covering on the pot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.